Okay, count two infinite sequences and series. Uh, this is a series and the integral test. Uh, so let's uh, go back to uh, examples. In sequences are like a1, a2, blah, 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 blah. Or it might start at zero, so it's a0, a1, a2, and so on. And series is a the sum of a sequence, the sum of terms in a sequence. So it's like a k from 1 to infinity, a k, and uh, I'm talking about infinite series. Or if it starts at 0, it k starts at 0. Example was a, a geometric sequence, uh, which is a, a, r, a, r squared, and blah, blah, blah. And then geometric series is just add that. Now our goal is to study convergence and divergence of an infinite series. And we will see that, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the first lecture on this topic, that uh, many nice uh, transcendental functions, uh, in fact, if they are continuous and differentiable as many times as we like, then they can be written as a, a series which we call a Taylor series or a special case Maclaurin series. And we can use that to calculate the value of those functions at certain points to a very nice, I mean, with a very low error. So let's see. So the goal is study the convergence and or divergence Divergence of uh, say sigma a k k from one to infinity. <sighs> okay, now how is this related to sequences? This is related to sequences in two ways. This guy here, well, let's call this S infinity. S infinity is related. To sequences in two ways. One is the A i's A one A two is a sequence. Two. If I stop at certain n, then I will get k from 1 to n a k and this guy s1 s2 s3 is a sequence okay uh, so uh, let me erase this and uh, write this here is Sn so Sn which runs from 1 to n the ak is a sequence so I have S1, S2, S3 and so on sequence of partial sums okay <laughs> so Convergence or divergence of a series is in fact studying convergence or divergence of this sequence of partial sums. So, studying convergence of sigma k from 1 to infinity of a k is the same uh, 
представим Convergence of the partial sums. So, in fact, we want to see uh, as answer this question does the limit as n as n goes to infinity, which is in fact a limit as n goes to infinity of sigma k from one to n a k exists. But we most often just need this, whether this limit exists or not. And uh, the, the fact that uh, what the limit is, well, we care what the limit is, but uh, we, we are not going to find the limit, uh, say, by hand. <laughs> so we use a computer program, just some, find the sum easily. Uh, and uh, anybody who has to, uh, Study some computer programming knows how to find this. Well, there might be some sophisticated methods to do that, but uh, anyway, it's easy, just a loop can do that. But the thing is, if you want to find this sum, you need this, it gives you value of a function at a certain point, then you have to, uh, before doing that, before committing the computer time and wasting your money, you have to know whether this thing is convergent. If it is convergent, then you uh, apply the program and find the value. Otherwise, you just say, okay, this is divergent, so who cares? So, that convergence and divergence uh, of a series like this becomes crucial. Uh, so, let, let me uh, go back to geometric series and uh, we studied that geometric series so let me just go back to that and we started convergence or divergence of that. So geometric series was like this. So okay, let's go back to geometric series. Okay, so the geometric series was like this. The sequence was A, comma, A R. A R squared, A R n minus one. So the general term is A R n minus one. So this will be A n. Oh, well, let's write k, and I want to use k. So A k, and the series is S n partial sum sigma k from one to n A R k minus 1. And remember we found a formula for this Sn. So we found that Sn in fact is a times m1 minus rn over 1 minus r. So S1, S2, dot, 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 is the sequence of partial sums and convergence or divergence of this geometric series is studying convergence or divergence of this partial sum. The sequence of partial sums. Okay, now, and we we did that in fact. We studied this thing and we found that. Uh, let me erase this thing. We found that the limit of S n as 
n goes to infinity, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of a times 1 minus rn over 1 minus r. Well, in fact, there is only this one only has the limit. I mean n. So the limit can just go inside, and that is uh, is equal to a times 1 minus the limit as n goes to infinity of rn uh, 1 minus r, right? So, and we studied the limit of rn and we realized that this is uh, convergent and convergent to, well, this is 0 a over 1 minus r if the absolute value of r is less than 1 and divergent to the right. Okay, so if that r is uh, the absolute value of r is less than 1, then it is convergent, and in this situation, in this case, we know what it converges to. Okay. One important thing is uh, definitely we are summing this thing. So we are finding the sum of these AKs. That's infinite. And in, in this situation, this is K from 1 to infinity, ARK minus 1, right? If we look at this situation, uh, when r is less than 1, the absolute value of r, this goes to 0. So if this r is less than 1, then r to power k minus 1 and r to power k, no difference, then the limit of this thing, limit of a, r k minus 1, as uh, k goes to infinity, as k goes to infinity, is simply a limit as k goes to infinity of r k minus 1, and that is zero. That is zero. So, we will see that this is in fact the general, for, this happens for any uh, infinite series. So let's, let's see what we just showed. We, I just uh, assumed that this S infinity exists because I assume that absolute value of R is less than 1, so this exists and is equal to this. With this assumption, which is based on this interesting situation, limit of each term in this series becomes zero. With this assumption, which gives convergence of this, this assumption also gives me this. So, convergence of this is related to this fact that the limit of AK this is in fact AK, this is the limit of AK, limit of AK as K goes to infinity is zero. We will see how the, this helps, in fact, that it, that's what I call uh, test number zero. Uh, it is a divergence test, we will see how we uh, use this interesting fact. Uh, okay, so let's see what an uh, integral test is. In fact, integral test is the first test, and uh, with that test, uh, everything, uh, almost every other test is kind of related to this one. So, before that, let's, let's uh, let me explain that the test zero. Test zero. So test zero is this. This. this test, um, pick another one. Test number zero. 
This number zero is this. In fact, that's a theorem. The theorem is uh, if sigma a k k from one or zero no difference is convergent. Then the limit of a k as k goes to infinity is zero. Okay. So if this limit is not zero, if this limit is not zero, then and say if it's say positive, let's assume that a k is positive. Uh, if this limit is not zero, then it means that this a k is approaching asymptotically to something, right? So as k, so some feeling of the proof is not proof, but uh, uh, no, let's write a note. Let us assume that a k is positive, then if limit of a k, k goes to infinity, is L and is not zero, then what happens? Then this AK gets closer and closer to L as K gets larger and larger. So we are talking about L minus some tiny tiny so plus some tiny tiny number. So as K gets larger, then AK is almost L, right? It's almost L. That's the meaning, and it's positive, so it's almost L. Uh, which means that after some point here, after some point, I have say A1 plus A2, so sigma AK becomes A1, A2, A3, da, 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 da. then it's almost L. You can say it's the L minus something, okay, but that something is so small. So it gets smaller and smaller because that's the limit, that's the meaning of limit. So it's almost L. And if I add infinite, infinite in many L's and they're positive, see, I assume that this is positive, so the limit is also non negative, let's say. If that's non negative, that's non negative. And if that's positive, then that's also no, not necessarily, but anyway. So this, if you add infinitely many such L's, then uh, you get the, you 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 get infinite. So it's divergent. So uh, let me I I need this thing, and I need this thing because the assumption is that. Uh, Suppose this is bigger than zero, right? Suppose this is bigger than zero. It's an L. So, so when I add some numbers which are bigger than zero, infinitely many times, you see this stops somewhere, right? This number stops somewhere, this k. And then after that, I almost have L. L, 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 L. And when I add those Ls, and I have assumed that it's bigger than zero because it goes against this. So, uh, adding so many numbers bigger than zero, you will get infinite. So if this guy here is not zero, then the, sum, the infinite sum is divergent. That is how this one is used. So let me... Uh, now how to use test zero. So we use the counter opposite of this. We call it counter opposite of this test. So we say if limit. So uh, I, here is the, the limit of a k zero. That was the test zero. So if limit of a k 
as k goes to infinity is not zero, then sigma a k is divergent. So most often you are given a series and that series is divergent and you try one of those uh, fancy uh, say tests and uh, you, you go nowhere. But if you simply had tried this thing, simply tried test zero, you would have seen that it's uh, uh, say it's divergent. So why why wasting time and try those fancy 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 say tests? And now example is a uh, is this example. So if I have uh, something like a sigma. Uh, say k uh, from 1 to infinity and uh, I have something like this 2k plus 3 for example and uh, say 5k minus 8 uh, well, this is like plus 8 so it doesn't not 0 so something like this and uh, you might at first glance think that it is it needs something like I don't know one of those tests uh, but in fact the first thing that you should always try and at least on scratch paper is ask yourself does the does this satisfy the test zero which means find the limit of AK find the limit of AK and see if it is not a zero then it's divergent finish don't do anything so let's try limit of 2k plus 3 5k plus 8 you you can divide both numerator and denominator by k and then you have a limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 3 over k uh, so 2 plus 3 over k and the denominator is 5 plus 8 over k. Now, as k goes to 0, anything divided by k, any uh, finite number divided by k is 0. So this limit is simply 2 over 5, which is not 0. So this limit is not 0. Therefore, by test 0, by test zero, it is divergent. By it, I mean this. It is divergent. So, that's how we use test zero. Now, what uh, sometimes happens is uh, students think that uh, this is equivalent to its opposite. It, the opposite of this is not true. Counter oppositive is this, but the opposite is this. So uh, let me erase this example. So anytime you see a rational function, say, or a rational expression here, uh, which has the same uh, degree, top and bottom, it has the same degree, then this is divergent. So this is this is true. The counter opposite is true. This is true. But this is false. False. I mean, from this theorem, this doesn't apply. And this is not a consequence of that theorem. But this is, in fact, this another way of uh, stating that theorem because the counter opposite statement is this. Uh, the same as the statement itself, so that's the same logical value. So let's say, uh, what is the opposite of that? Opposite is uh, if limit of AK is zero, then sigma AK is convergent. False. So, 
it is true that you check the limit first. And some students, when it, uh, when, it, uh, when the test, I mean, when the limit is zero, they immediately say that it is convenient. If you make that mistake, I mean, if, it, if you are uh, taking an exam or whatever, that means zero, you will get zero points, okay? So be careful. I have given you false, false, false. I don't know how to say that because I have seen students making that mistake. Now, the example, so one of the most important examples of this is in fact the harmonic series. So example, what we call the harmonic series, which is sigma 1 over k, k from 1 to infinity, which is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 4 fourths. Uh, so, this, let's see, limit of 1 over k, a k, k goes to infinity is 0, but sigma k from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over k is diverse. Okay, that is divergent. Now, um, at some point, I will, well, one way to show this thing is, in fact, using the integral test, which comes next. So, but this is an important example that the, the that if this limit is zero, it does not mean that the series is convergent. No way. That is the most important example in this situation. So. Don't forget that, never use test zero in the wrong way. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, uh, that, that is Now, well, I can uh, show you uh, somehow, how this thing happens if I get this is like a well, uh, it can be considered like a proof. So let, let's just look at it more carefully. Uh, I have sigma a k k from one to infinity uh, convergent. So let s n be sigma k from one to n. A k and s n minus one be sigma k from one to n minus one uh, a k and uh, so what is the so uh, but what is a n a n in fact is uh, s n minus s n minus one right. This one has uh, just one extra term that is a n. Now let's find the limit of a n as n goes to infinity. That is limit of s n minus limit of s n minus one as n goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. What is this limit? If this is convergent then these two are the same, right? This is a convergent, this is in fact the, the sum, the end partial sum, that is the n minus first partial sum, but as n goes to infinity, these two are the same in fact. And they give me s infinity, this gives me s infinity, this is s infinity, and by convergent, we mean that this is a finite number means this infinity is finite. So this is S infinity, S infinity, so this is zero. Okay, so that's in fact the proof 
Anyway, so uh, let's uh, continue with, uh, let me see what, uh, yeah, we still have some time. So let's uh, see what uh, the integral test is and how the integral test works. So I start with, uh, so the integral test. So I'm, uh, uh, let, let, let me give you examples. Example. We want to see if this thing, if this is conversion or divergent. So we want to study this. Now what we do is this. We know that we have a graph for this. On your calculator, uh, if you go to that mode and uh, a few lines from the top, uh, it is the mode for graphing and the mode for graph. Uh, you usually you have used like a, a, a rectangular. I guess it is rectangular or something. Anyway, it has a polar. It has a parametric. It has P A R M something like that and P O L, and it also has S E Q. S E Q is sequential. So in, for sequential, you give a sequence and it gives you the uh, what's that? It gives you the, for example, if you want the sum, it will give you the sum. Anyway, so uh, what do I have here? I have 1 over k squared. So, and k starts at 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now, 1 over k squared, this is 1, and k equals 2, so this is the k, uh, say, axis. That is 1 over 4 and then 1 over 9 and so on. Uh, so, let me uh, also um, go this way. So, I can write this as sigma k from 1 to infinity, 1 over k squared times 1. Yeah, well, I mean, you might say it times 1, are you kidding me? Well, why do you do that? Well, simple. So when k is 1, 1 over k squared times 1 is in fact this area, right? 1 over 2 squared times 1 is this area. 1 over 3 squared is this area, and so on. So each one of them is, so this is 1 over 1 squared, 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 3 squared, so what am I finding? This is like some area. This is area under these portions. Now, uh, I don't want to go too far into, the, into detail, but anyway. But I also have a function that goes through these points. What function is that? That function is in fact 1 over x squared, remember? That was 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared. So this sum, this sum, starting from 1 to infinity, excluding this one, so this sum, f of x equals, I mean, this uh, sigma, uh, 1 over k squared k from 1 to infinity is in fact that uh, this is 1, 1 plus the rest of that is uh, so let's say this is in fact less than or equal to uh, I can start at 2, no, no difference, but let's start at 1, that's okay so there's just 1 here, then the rest of that is uh, integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. And remember, since I'm dealing with the positive numbers, this is definitely positive. So it doesn't go to negative infinity this way, it just stops at zero. So, so I have this thing. What is this 1 over x squared dx? So it, let's find it. So I know that this is 1 uh, plus uh, minus 1 over x from 1 to infinity. And uh, this is what? This is uh, infinite, this is 0 minus 0 plus 1. 
So it is in fact a 1 plus 1, which is 2. So I have found that this 1 over k squared is a number, is a limit bounded from below by 0 and from above by 2. So I can say that this is convergent and it goes somewhere. It's just adding up. Remember that monotone convergence theorem? So it's like a sequence which is monotone, it goes up and it's bounded. So using that monotone convergence theorem, the sequence, uh, by sequence I mean the SNs. The SNs. The sequence of SNs came from 1 to N, 1 over k squared. The sequence SN, this SN is bounded. So by monotone convergence theorem, MCT, it is convergent. That is monotone convergence theorem, or monotonic convergence theorem. So by that theorem, which I mentioned, I didn't prove, it is a convergent. So that's one important place that that theorem is used. I have a sequence which is bounded, and increasing, which is monotone, increasing or decreasing is monotone, and uh, and why is it increasing? You just uh, S n plus one is adding one term, and one positive term, so S n plus one definitely is bigger than S n. So it is bounded and increasing. So by M C T it is convergent. Now, but in practice we are not dealing with in, with infinity. What happens if you want to find a a value of this thing, you cannot find it exactly, but you can just uh, find an approximate value. It depends on how many decimal points you need. You can just go on and on and on. And in fact, we will see uh, if you want certain, say, error, then how many terms do I need to get to that error? Okay. To be honest, though, so that this sum is less than that error. So that is the integral test. If uh, something like this happens, then it is, uh, in fact, a convergent. So another example is that one, uh, the harmonics, one over k. So one over k is the, this is the second example, one over k. Uh, let's do the same thing. So for one over k, I do the same thing. Uh, of one over k, let, let me draw the picture. Now, one, two, three, four, and so on, five. This is the k. So, one, one is here, one half is here, one third is here. And I know one over k uh, times one. Okay, yeah, now this time, instead of going to the left, I go to the right. So this one, in fact, is 1 over 1 times 1. Then uh, this one, uh, I go this way. So this is, in fact, 1 half times 1. Then I go this way, and 1 third times 1, and so on. So, now if I look carefully, I also have this uh, curve that passes through these points. Okay, so this curve passes through these points, and this is y or fx equals 1 over x, right? So 1 over x, for 1 over x, this guy here is bigger than the integral, right? So for 1 over x, this sigma k from 1 to infinity 1 over k is bigger than integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And remember, this is divergent. 
In fact, it goes to infinity. So what am I? What have I proved? I have proved that this sum is bigger than infinity, which means that there is nothing bigger than infinity. So it means that it is divergent. So if this integral, the integral of that function, which gives you this, is finite, then the integral test tells me that it is uh, that series is convergent. If that integral is infinite or divergent, then the series is divergent. So this is in fact uh, what I gave in that example. I said that uh, this is a nice and maybe the most important example that uh, a, a series has a k go to going to zero, but the sigma a k is not uh, convergent. If the harmonic series is a good example. So uh, I can sum up this thing in a theorem, which is called the integral test. So let's. With this uh, one, in fact, the textbook has a nice uh, the statement. The textbook is quite nice. So, test one, the integral test. Now, uh, or let me, uh, I guess, the, the book. Yeah, it is in fact. Uh, so, suppose. F is continuous, positive, and decreasing. So this doesn't work for infinite series uh, where the, uh, the terms cannot be written as a function like that. F of some, uh, uh, some function applied to n. Well, I, will, I, will tell you. I will give you an example. So, uh, Fn. Then uh, the series Sigma a k and uh, k starting at one going to infinity is convergent if and only if the improper integral integral from 1 to infinity fx dx is convergent. Now uh, this means this. I so let's uh, look at it then I will write the IE. So it, it means that uh, uh, how do we use this thing? So we are given uh, sigma a n sigma a n and uh, First thing we do is we find a function that has this uh, property that f at n is a n. Then we check the uh, integral of x. So we say that this sigma a k is convergent if and only if this integral is convergent. So this is convergent if and only if the integral is convergent. So. This I E means this, so we can uh, write it this uh, it's convergent. So instead of writing even over here, uh, then uh, so I can write this in two uh, steps: I sigma a k is convergent if the integral from 1 to infinity fx dx is convergent. And the other way around is we say that this is divergent. This is 
direction if this integral is divergent. Okay. So, first thing first, uh, this uh, function f should be continuous, positive, and decreasing. So, it means that a n, in fact, is uh, non negative at least. So, this doesn't apply to a negative or say alternating sequences. We will see there is, in fact, one, an important section on alternating sequences. So, I mean, serious. So, let me uh, give you examples of uh, this thing. If uh, we can write so examples uh, one in fact yeah, that was one over say n to power uh, well let's write k. Uh, we usually use n, so let's use n, n to power some m, n from 1 to infinity, right? Then in this case, f of x is x to power n, right? And 2 sigma uh, e to power minus n, n from 1 to infinity, then f of x is e to power minus x. Now uh, 3 uh, sigma n from 1 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, n factorial, what is fx equal x factorial, what is it? Well, in fact, uh, we have gamma function, which is something like this, but uh, we are not going to use that. Uh, so this thing, we say that uh, uh, this uh, theorem doesn't really apply to this. So, uh, because we cannot write fx, what is x factor? Okay, so not this one. So not this one. So we cannot use, don't use, or you cannot use, not don't use, cannot use the integral test. Cannot use the integral test. For these two we can. In fact here I need x to be bigger than zero in fact, or bigger than one. But it's bigger than zero anyway. Uh, x bigger than zero, and that gives me uh, x bigger than zero. And increasing, both of them are increasing. Are decreasing, sorry. This is m minus n, sorry. So x to the power minus m uh, is decreasing, and e to the power minus x is also decreasing. So uh, decreasing, positive. Decreasing positive, and you can write this uh, a n as f of n. In most cases, you can. But this one, no way. You, the only, the only thing you can write is in fact uh, not x factorial, in fact one over x factorial. G. We're making a mistake. But anyway, what is x factorial? That that was the point. That was the point. So. Okay, so that is, is the, these two are in fact examples of uh, these three examples of where and uh, where, for what kind of uh, infinite series we can use the integral test. So, and we will see next time how integral test is used to uh, show certain uh, infinite series are in fact convergent. Then we will use them in uh, for other tests. So integral test is uh, like basic. Then the other tests are used more extensively in fact. Okay, so see.